It's a joy. Pleasure to be here in your midst in Newcastle again this afternoon. Bring to you again the, the good news, the glad tidings, the gospel of the Savior, and Jesus Christ the Lord, his loving kindness for those who are lost and gone astray from their maker, that is. God is kindly in his grace and his love provided you with the way back to himself from that terrible dark path of sin and of course that way that way is found in his son Jesus Christ it says here in the Bible we must needs die all of us you know certainty isn't it you know we all faced with it and there's water spilt in the ground which cannot be gathered up again neither does God respect any person yet doth he devise means that his banished be not expelled from him God has found a means devised a means by which Men and women who are banished from his presence, that is, alienated from him. Because of sin, you know, that's, uh, that begins, of course, you know, before you. Before you think your first thought, before you breathe your first breath. In your mother's womb, that, that's where it begins. You're conceived in sin. And you come into the world, then nine months later, born in sin. And of course, that's why you go astray right from the start, you know. And of course, it gathers momentum as you grow. You know, as you get older, well, the, the debt mounts up, you know, because um, every day is a, is a sinful day. You're every day in this world is a day as a sinner treasuring up wrath for the day of God's wrath the Bible says but that, that's not the good news the good news is that God has devised a means by which uh, those banished from his presence alienated from him and from the life of God he's devised a way by which um, you can be brought back from that uh, dark, dark path of sin. And that way, of course, well, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by him. There's no other name. The Bible says, under the whole canopy of heaven, whereby a person can be saved, that is, brought back to God, only one person, one mediator, and in the love of God made available to you. That's the good news. God loves you and has, of course, provided this means by which you may be brought back to him, brought to a knowledge of him, a knowledge of his love, to love him, and, of course, um, well, of course, uh, intimately, you know, relationship, life. That, that's really what the gospel's about, not religion, you know. Um, it's about life, you know, it's about God putting his his life into your soul and his love into your heart and that can only be accomplished by the gospel oh the religion in the world won't do that you know it's um, you know uh, Muhammad's religion doesn't give you life neither does the Pope's or anybody else's man-made religion is dead so what can a dead religion what can a dead Pope or a dead prophet what can, what can they avail you? You know, you got a dead soul. How can dead religion put a life into a dead soul? That takes somebody with life in themselves. Somebody with the authority, that is, to give life to others. And that's who and what Jesus is. He has the authority. The Bible says, all authority in heaven and earth is given unto him following his resurrection, that is. It's a risen Savior that you need. The Bible says we're all sinners. 
So what's the one thing? What's the one thing that a sinner needs? A Savior. And God, in the greatness of his love for you, has made available for you a Savior so that you take him, come to him, believe in him, trust in him, confide in him, and you get that life. You get that life, that life, Jesus says, he came to give life more abundantly, he says, he came to give. Because the problem is, you know, with men, women, and children too, you know, as Jesus says, you are not willing to come to me that you might have life. There's life enough in Jesus, I tell you, for the entire world, for five worlds. For the whole town of Newcastle under Lyme. If that is, well, they were to come to Jesus, they would get that life. But you're not willing to come to me that you might have that life, says Jesus. That's the problem. Your will has to be changed. Heart has to be changed. Nature has to be changed. The one that is, that you are conceived and born with. The one that you came into the world with already alienated from God, from the life of God. So by the gospel that I bring to you today, the possibility remains as there. Well, you have the breath of life in you, that is. The possibility of you living for the first time in your earthly existence. Existing, you know, just because you are born of a woman, just because you exist, doesn't mean to say you've got life in you. There's no life apart from God. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, says Jesus. He's the only one with authority to give you life. Only he can give it to you, so you must go to him. Go to him. He'll give you life. Trust me, he says. I'll save you. Believe in me. Confide in me. And I will give you my righteousness, my life, my risen life and you will live for the first time in your earthly existence. But of course, don't leave it too late, will you? Because, you know, there's none of us know, none of us know when a day, you know, what a day will bring forth. None of us know, you know, how long it will be for us in this world. So don't believe in it too late. Don't be thinking, you know, that, well, you've got plenty of time because, well, you just don't know that. Now is the time, the accepted time, says God, to get right with them, to, free, to, to receive the free grace of God offered to you here today, and the free love of God, and the free justification. It's all free, without money, without price, no conditions, unconditional salvation set before you is offered to you. You just take, you just receive, and it becomes yours. By faith, that is. Trust in Jesus Christ. So I got Bibles, I got New Testaments, I got this here, Gospel of John, good place to begin reading the Bible. You'd like to have a copy of God's written word offered to you. Quite freely, no cost, no obligation, none whatsoever to you. You'd like one, you come and ask for one. If you've got a question, a sensible one, that is, Feel free to ask it. Don't have the answers to all your philosophical dilemmas. But I do have the answer to the most important question. That is, how do you, a sinner, how do you get right with God? And the answer to that question, well, simple. The Bible answers it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved. And if you would like, for some reason, whatever, to somebody pray for you then I would be more than happy to do that for you also only here to help point you in the right direction because we've all of us right from day one we take the wrong direction and we are simply point you in the right direction the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world and would take yours away this afternoon for you to come to him, trust in him, believe in him, take and receive the gift of God, 
For God so loved the world, this bad, bad, evil world, so loved the world, that he gave the gift, the love gift of God to the world, to a bad, bad world. God so loved this bad world that he gave the gift, the love gift of his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, whosoever believeth in him, they should not perish, die in their sin, that is, face the judgment and condemnation of God, all eternity, but have everlasting life, free gift, just simply, simply receive. Just simply receive, that's all. In the word of God here for you today, this afternoon, Newcastle, Jesus speaking, he says, um, he says, search the scriptures, the Bible, that is, the one I hold in my hands, the one, of course, already offered to you. Search, he says, the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and you certainly do, this is the promise of God, promise of eternal life to those who believe, that is. Not to unbelief, not to unbelief. Oh, there's nothing for unbelief. You know what the Bible says? It says here, He that believeth on the Son is everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So bring an end to your unbelief today, Newcastle sinners. Turn from it, flee from it, into the arms of Jesus. Search the scriptures, for in them you think of eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. The Bible and the scriptures, the Holy Bible, we call it a Holy Bible because it comes to you from a Holy God. A God of love, yes, but a God of holiness to the uttermost. He has given the Word, the scriptures, the Bible, Old and New Testaments, both of them, join together now. Hold in my hand. You search them. You look into them. Because it's there that you find eternal life. It's there you find the author of life. It's there you find the one who gives, is able to give you life. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he's the author of life. He's the only one who can give you life and give you that eternal life. My sheep, my sheep, he says, they hear my voice, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Where do they hear his voice? They hear his voice through the preaching of the gospel, that which I'm doing here today. Foolishness, says God, foolishness. To those who are perishing, those who are dying in their sin, those who are unbelieving, foolishness to them, but to those who believe, well, that's the power of God unto salvation. The preaching of the gospel, that which I'm doing here today, preaching Jesus Christ and then crucified. The one who loved you. God so loved the world, he gave his only son. But his only son so loved the world that he came and lived and loved and died, rose again from the dead in order that your sin, think on it, in order that your sin, all that you ever did that's offensive to God could be taken away. Your sin, your guilt, your shame, your blame, the curse and the wrath of God taken off of you, liberated you, no condemnation, the life of God in your soul and the love of God in your heart. That's the gospel. That's what Jesus does for sinners day after day and will do till the end of the age and would do for you today should you but take and receive and believe on his name. So search the scriptures. There you hear his voice. Some people, they hear his voice reading the Bible, reading the Old and the New Testaments of the Bible. It's there that you find them. That's the place to look. Seek ye the Lord, the prophet says. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found in the Bible, that is. This is the place to look. 
For Jesus, that is. But remember, you're not looking for a religion. You're not looking for a church. You're looking for a person, the person of his son, Jesus. Search the scriptures, the Bible. That's the place to look. And that's the place where you hear his word, the word of the Savior, who if you follow him, will give you eternal life and you shall never perish. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Well, you have the ability, that is, well, to search the scriptures, to read the Bible, and to use that faculty of reason properly that God has given to you. Not for some imaginary man-made philosophy like Darwin, Daft Darwinism or Daft Darkinism. No, no. Come now, said the Lord, and let us reason together. Where do you come? You come to the Bible. That's where you come. And you use that faculty, God-given faculty of reason, and you see it's quite reasonable everything that God says about his creation of the world, of the universe, of you yourself, what he says about sin, your sin in particular, and what he says about the remedy for that sin, the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So it's here in the Bible, that's the place to go. Why I offer you a copy of God's written word, that you might search it, that you might look into it, that you might seek to understand it, that you might read it even prayerfully, asking God to give you light and understanding. Because Jesus, he says, he says you must be born again. You see, nobody, the Bible, you see, the problem is the Bible is a closed book to a closed mind. God has to open your mind first before you understand it. Oh yes, you can understand it intellectually, but not spiritually, not savingly. You must be born again, says Jesus, because except a man be born again, he cannot see, perceive, that is, understand, you know, get it. Can't get it, you know. It's a mystery to him. It's like a fable. A fairy, fairy story to him. To God awakens you by his spirit. Through the preaching of the gospel, through the reading of his word, searching the scriptures, that's how. God awaken you out of your sleep of death, out of that slumber of death. Awaken you to the reality of your state and situation and give you understanding, give you light. It's like somebody, you know, you're in the darkness, you know, in a room. Oh, I don't know, for ages and ages, hours, days even. And all of a sudden, somebody switches the light on. And, well, at first, you know, it hurts. Because, uh, you know, it makes the eyes hurt, you know. But then God switches the light on in your sin darkened mind, you know, and you're awakened to the reality of your dreadful, dreadful, awful, black, black sin, you know? And it, well, it kind of terrifies you, you know, to begin with, until he shows you, until he awakens your eyes, until he illumines your, your mind further and enables you to see Jesus as a savior, a remedy for that sin. And then, of course, well, then you're ready to swim shark and fest in waters to get to Jesus because only he can save you from it. So, like I say, search the scriptures. If you've got this delusional idea about, about evolution, you know, if you've got this delusional, uh, delusional idea about man-made religion, Muhammad's, the popes, and everybody else's, well, here's the cure, here's the remedy. Search the scriptures, God's word. Read what he says about creation, how that he, in six days, literal days, 24-hour periods, made heaven and earth. Well, oh, madam. That's right, that's the most read book in the world. That's it, yep. Yeah, I'm a Methodist, I saw you last yep, week. Yeah, we talked before, yes. Yes, we yeah. talked before. Yeah. God bless you, madam. Nice to see you again. Yeah. Shake my hand.
Yeah. How's the church doing, all right? We, we've just, um, we're having the, the old we the boiler out of the back right, to the front. Oh. So we've got, we've got to do the service for the next couple of weeks and then we'll decide whether we need to be in the place in there. So wonderful, that's right, that's right, that's right. Doesn't matter where it is. Well, this time last year we thought we'd back to close, but we've managed to get some grass to couple of Good, good, wonderful, wonderful, yeah. good. Please, please. We've got a regular, like, it's about 20 birthdays, yeah. regular, around 12, but 15, I think it's 14. What's so bad these days? It's not bad these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a Sunday morning one. Yeah. Methodist Sunday. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Just keep going. Keep going. Well, I, I'm, a, I'm Presbyterian. Uh, my church is up in Glasgow. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, well, yeah, sometimes I go to Bethel, you know, the, in Hanley. The, the, Be the Bethel, I, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, have a good day, my dear. Eh? Nice talking to you again. God bless you. God bless you. So we search, search the scripture, says Jesus, you know. See what he has to see, see what he has to say, you know, because here's the thing, Jesus, you know. He's the one, he's the one who everything was made for. Made by him and for him. He's the one who spoke the universe into being. And don't you think the one the one who speaks, you know, and brings a universe into a world into being, humanity into being. I think he lacks the power to save even you. I, I don't know what your sins are. You know, I, you know, they could be many, varied. You know, immorality, false religion, idolatry, adultery. You know, covetousness, greed, avarice. You know, um, they come in many shapes and forms. You know. And then there's the alcohol and drugs and all that stuff and all the, the madness, the insanity of your present day culture, you know, the transgender folly. All that stuff, you know, it's all all comes out of the same pit, human sin. A dark black pit, you know. Out of those black natures in which we were conceived and born. That's where it all comes from. Maybe perhaps, you know, times you you know, you've asked yourself, you know, stuff, you know, things that you do, you know, is wrong, it's harming you, self-harming, you know, and, and you know it's wrong, you know it's morally wrong, but you keep going back to it, and you keep doing it, you know, maybe sometimes you do ask yourself the question, why do I do it? Why does a drunkard keep going back to his drink? The drug artist back to his drugs. Why why do they just keep on, you know? Somebody, you know, trapped in uh, in the folly of sexual immorality and written with disease, but they keep going back to it, you know? Why 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 you say it's that nature in which you were conceived and born? You know, you you got a bias in you, you know, away from God. And towards sin, you delight in it, revel in it. But the thing is, what you don't realize is it's killing you. It's killing you softly. It's killing you and you don't even know it. It's taking the very life out of you. And one day it will kill you eternally, everlastingly. Unless that is you're cured, unless you're saved, unless Jesus saves you. Unless Jesus changes those natures, causes you to be born again. Be born again, you see, of God that is, not of man, not of the will of man. Of something you can perform yourself. He has to perform it in you. Jesus must put his risen life in you, his love into your heart. He must do it. But you've got to concur in the matter, you know. And God doesn't deal with you as a... Like a robot, you know, like a stock or a block. But he, want, he, needs you, he wants you to concur in the matter. That is, you know, like the prophet says, seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, turn from his sin, that is all he knows to be sin. As best as you're able to but come to Jesus from the power. Search the scriptures. See what he has to say to you, even today. The one who created everything. Six literal 24-hour periods made it all. 
by the work of his power. One work from Jesus and everything changes. When he speaks, things happen. The things he wants to happen. He speaks salvation to you or you'll be saved. No question about it. His voice, powerful, sets the scriptures. In them, you think you have eternal life, he says. And they are they which testify of me. So get yourself a Bible somewhere, somehow. Read it, study it, search it. See what God has to say about creation. How he made the world, how he made you. And of course the New Testament as to how. Well, he still loves that creation. Even though it's gone bad. Even though man has made it bad. Evil. When he says that God so loved the world, he means he so loved this evil world. And you, of course, and I, which are part of the evil contributors to it. It's a bad, bad world, not because God made it that way, but because man has made it that way. Man has spoiled it. But God has a plan. God's going to renew it. And when it's renewed, when he's made it all new and shiny again, the only inhabitants then will be the righteous, those who are righteous by faith, that is, in Jesus, those who have received and believed in him, trusted in him, confided in him, the one who came in order to reconcile, the Bible says, all things, heaven and earth, all things, humanity, to reconcile all things to himself. And that reconciliation, well, is set before you, is offered to you here in Newcastle today once again. Take him, the reconciler Jesus. He pleads with you through me as I bring his word to you, tell you these things. He pleads with you. He says, be ye reconciled to God while you may, while you have the breath of life in you, while you can. Take the reconciler of the mediator. He'll bring you back to God. That's what he promises to do. So search the scriptures. Read the Bible. See, listen out for his voice. Hear him speak to you in the lines of scripture. The Bible, that is. Read it and read it till you find him. Or till he finds you. Then, of course, see what God has to say about sin. You know, he hates it. Don't, do not do this thing that I hate, he says. God's a purer eyes than to behold evil. He says that even, even our best efforts, your righteousness, as God says, are like filthy rags in his sight. So you see a sinner and a holy God, well, they, they just, they're like oil and water. They just can't mix, you know. There's just absolutely no way, no way that, you know, that a relationship with God, you know, can be repaired, restored, maintained until that sin's gotten out of the way because God will have nothing to do with it or nothing to do with you until it is dealt with. But the good news is that God, in his immense love, in the great love that he has for fallen sinners, fallen mankind, sinners of Newcastle on the line here today. God has found a way, devised a way by which that sin can be taken away and the guilt taken away and the wrath and the curse of God taken away that lies upon you because of that human sin. God has devised the way and that way is through his son Jesus Christ and that way only no other way no man can come to me says Jesus no one can come to the father but by me no one gets reconciled to God but by Jesus the son of God so like I say don't take my word for it it's here in the Bible and it's offered to you quite freely Yours to take, yours to search, yours to read, yours to find. Find eternal life because in them you think, he says, that you have eternal life. And so you do it. It's a life-giving gospel. It's a life-giving word of God. It's the promise of God, life and salvation. 
for those who are without life, for dead sinners. Only one answer to, only one answer to death, and that's life. Only one answer, only one answer to death, and God has provided the answer for it. It's the point that a man wants to die, that's certain, that's the only, that's the only certainty you've got. Apart from God, that's all you've got to look forward to. Certainty, absolute certainty, my friends. Point it out to man, what's to die? You too, young man. You too is coming for you. Stalking you, young man. Point it. Marked in God's calendar that day, that hour, when you breathe your last. Every one of you. And after that, closure, the end. Oh, yeah. You can convince yourself, your mind, that there's no God. What? But you cannot convince yourself that death brings closure because it does not. Because you know that you're a morally accountable creature. And one day you're going to give account. It is appointed unto man once to die. After that, then comes the judgment. So before you get to that place, that time, that day, that hour, well, I plead with you on behalf of Jesus Christ, be reconciled to God while well, you may, even this very day. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. The answer to the certainty of death, the certainty of eternal life. Whosoever believes in Jesus, that is, in the Son, shall not perish already perishing in your sin. Now, even as I speak, sin is killing you, taking the life out of you, and one day, eternally, everlastingly. But here today, that death can be stopped in its tracks. The grim reaper who comes to us all. You may be a king, a billionaire, might just be a street preacher, but everybody faces the grim reaper. That day comes when he wraps his slimy fingers around your soul and draws it from your body and returns it to God for judgment. How shall you be found in that day, I ask you, Newcastle sinners? A judgment of condemnation or commendation? Which will it be? Well, it depends on what you do with Jesus, who is called the Christ. Believe on him. You trust in him. And you get life. Life from the dead, already dead in your trespasses and sins. Jesus comes to put life into your soul, into your dead soul, and to make you live forever. To live with the confidence the death no longer has any power, any hold, stranglehold upon you. The fear of it's gone. You can laugh at it. You can mock it, just as the apostle does in the Bible. Oh, death, where is thy sting? It's gone. The condemnation is gone. Because for the believer, the one who trusts in Jesus, confides in Jesus, and in his work, on the cross, the empty tomb is rising from the dead. The sinner who truly trusts in Jesus, that moment from God a pardon receives forgiveness. No longer any condemnation, no fear of death. It's gone, 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 vanished forever. Eternal life is given. Search the scripture. For in them you think you have eternal life. That's where you look. That's the place to look. The scriptures of God, the Bible, the Holy Bible, given to you. A revelation from God given to you. Here you are in God's world, and you look at his creation, all its beauty. And you see yourself, you see that the God, but you don't know him. And you can't know him, you can't find him. Then you, maybe perhaps you would turn to his law, you know, and there, and there you see, you, you're nothing but terrified because you've not kept it. 
because you've not kept it for one day, for one hour of your earthly existence. You've broken it every which way. You're a sinner alienated from God and the light of God. But oh, my friends, you continue to turn the pages of the Bible and you come, you come to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You search the scriptures, you continue to read and study and meditate upon the person of his son, Jesus Christ, gentle, holy, meek, and mild, easy to be entreated, not hard to deal with. He comes to save you, to bring you to a knowledge of God, that God that you know exists. There's not a man, there's not a woman in all this world that doesn't know that God is. Atheists, there's no such a thing on the planet. You know that God is. That's not your problem. Your problem is you don't like him. You don't love him. Because that's what you're commanded to do as one of his creatures. To love him, to fear him, fear him to walk with him, to know him, to obey him. But you haven't. You're a sinner. You can't. You're cut off. You're alienated. You have no life in you. Dead. Not just a little bit dead, not just a big bit dead, totally and completely dead, cut off, alienated from the life of God. That's your portion as you come into this world, your natural born state and condition, apart from God, apart from His Son, Jesus Christ. But here, in God's Word here, in the scriptures, the God who made heaven and earth, the God who has given us this wonderful revelation in order that you might search, seek, and find him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the rest shall be added unto you, says Jesus. Hello, how are you doing? Have a nice day. God so loved the world, Newcastle Center, so loved you that he gave you this book, this revelation of himself, and how you can find him and come to know and enjoy that love in order that you might be saved, delivered, reconciled to God in his love in his mercy, in his loving kindness. Search the scriptures, he says, for in them you think of eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. That's what the Bible does, beginning to end, start to finish. Jesus is all over the Bible, beginning to end. He's there in the beginning, creating everything that was ever created. He created it all by him, for him. And he's the one who started it. And you go to the other end of the Bible, and he's the one who brings it to a finish, to a close, on the day of judgment. And God tells us in between, he tells us that he has given notice to you, all civilization, that he intends to judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has raised from the dead, even Jesus. So you see, beginning to end, start to finish, Jesus is all over the Bible like a rash. So when you read the Bible, you're not looking to be religious, you're not looking for a church, you're not looking, you're not looking for anything, you're looking for Jesus. Look for him. Read John's Gospel, for instance. I'll give you a copy of it. Read it over and over and over again. And don't stop, don't cease until you know who he is. Until you know him. Until he knows you. Until you know that you've got eternal life. Because only he can give you that eternal life. That's what he came for. That's what he lived and loved and died for. Take your death. Take your death, take the death, the eternal death, even hell. 
took that hell upon himself on that cross so that you might not have to go there, you a sinner, deserving of it, but getting what you don't deserve, getting eternal life. Only Jesus, only the Son of God can give you that. That's what he came for, why he died on that cross, why he suffered, why he bled, shed his blood, because only only by the shedding of blood can there be, God's law says, can there be forgiveness, remission of sin. You go to his lamb, there's no blood sacrifice there, so there's no forgiveness there. But God himself has provided the necessary blood sacrifice. His only son, the lamb of God, which taken away the sin of the world. I would take away yours today should you trust in him and get life, life from the dead, resurrection, regeneration, not religion, not religion, resurrection, that's what you need. The risen life of Jesus in your soul and the love of God poured into your heart by the Holy Spirit, offered to you, set before you here, this very afternoon in Newcastle, yours just simply and only for the taking. These are they, these are they, he says, that testify of me, God's own testimony, God's own record concerning his only son, how he sent him in his love. God so loved the world that he gave that he sent his only son in order that you might be saved, the evidence of God's love for you and giving you and making available to you a Savior, a life giver. So you go out of this world unsaved, as you might do. You go out of this world still alienated from God and yeah. from the life of God. You go out of this world still in that state of death that you're in presently. Then it becomes eternal, everlasting, no way back then from the dark path of sin. No way out of the state of death then, only now, only now is, as the gospel is declared to you. Only now will you have the breath of life in you. Only now, in this world, some point in your history, when it comes to that day, and you stand before God in judgment as you must. We must all appear before the judgment throne of Christ. In that day when he judges you, you stand before him. You need a righteousness not of your own. You need his righteousness. You need the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You come to him, you trust in him, you believe. And he gives you his righteousness, a perfect righteousness, one by which you'll be able to stand before God in that day with complete and utter confidence, knowing that you'll be received into the glory of heaven and not banished for all eternity into the darkness and the pit of hell. Jesus came to save sinners. That's what we all are. He's the only Savior. And shaking your head doesn't change the truth, madam. Not one iota. Sinners to a man, to a woman. Lost, ruined, undone. And it's your own doing. But God so loved you, he gave his son up to the death of the cross. That through him that you might be reconciled even this very day. But the unbelief has to go. Only believing, only trusting, only confiding in the person, the lovely, lovely person of God's Son, Jesus. Only trusting in him, his love for you, loved you and gave himself for your sins that you might be reconciled to God through him. Bid you pleads with you, implores you, even this very afternoon, 
through me that you be reconciled to God. If that's not love, I don't know what is. You've got a world that talks about love, sings about love so poetically, but can't define it. Doesn't know what it is. Talks about, sings about love. And says, well, says we don't need the gospel in order to love. Let's all just love one another, but you can't. Can't you hate one another? The very antithesis of the law. Jesus says it. Sums up the law. He says to love God and to love your neighbor. But you can't help yourselves from doing the opposite. Hating God and hating your neighbor and killing your neighbor. Not happy. Not happy unless you're devising means by which you can kill your neighbor. You do it through your world religions. Islam, Rome, killing, killing, killing religions. Muhammad, religion comes to kill and destroy. Jesus says, I did not come to kill. I did not come to destroy men's lives. I came to heal and to save. Religion kills. Jesus gives life, life from the dead. No, not happy unless you're killing one another. They that hate me, says God, love death. Abortion, 12, 13 million unborn children ripped from their mother's womb in the name of abortion. Euthanasia, you can have either on the National Health Service. They might cure one or two people, but they kill a lot more. Killing, killing, killing goes on. Death, 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 it stalks as well. It's the only certainty you've got, and then the inevitability of God's judgment afterwards. I set before you life and death. Which will you choose? Newcastle, I set before you. Offer you life in the name of the Son of God, the life-giving Son of God, who came that you might have life and have it more abundantly, that you might live and live eternally, everlastingly. But you've got to take him. You've got to trust in him, his person. Trustworthy person, the only trustworthy person, I tell you, in all the universe, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who speaks these words to you. Search the scriptures, the word of God, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me, God's record concerning his own son. Are you going to provoke him to more wrath? Are you going to call God a liar? These are they that testify of me, says Jesus. The record concerning God's son is death and resurrection for sinners of Newcastle even, that this day that you might enter into life eternal, everlasting, an everlasting love of God, the unquenchable love of God, offered to you. Bring an end to sin. Bring an end to death. Jesus Christ, the author of life. I am the resurrection and the life. His risen life in your soul and the love of God in your heart and living and walking with God in love for the rest of your days and time and then for all eternity. Because that moment comes when you breathe your last, you close your eyes in death and you open them the other side and what do you behold? What do you see? Either a dreadful, dreadful judge or a delightful savior who with open arms welcomes you into heaven's glory. Which way will you go? Choose. Choose life. Choose life today, Newcastle sinners. Come to him, the author of life. Come to Jesus. Trust in him. Believe in him. Confide in him. And he promises. He says, I will save you.
forgive you, pardon you, put eternal life into your soul. It's all here in the Bible. Not my words, my thoughts, my opinions. It's here in God's work. Search the scriptures. Bibles, the New Testaments, this Gospel of John here, a good place to begin searching the scriptures. You're like a copy of God's written word. You come and ask for one. Search them. Seek and see until you find, until you know that you have life in your soul. Your dead soul might live. You're like a copy of God's written word. You come and ask for one. Gladly place into your hand. Got a question, feel free to ask it. Like somebody pray for you, then I would be more than happy to do that for you also. Newcastle sinners, lost, ruined, undone, come to Jesus. Come to him today. Trust in him while you may. Now is the accepted time, says God. Now is the only time you've got. I haven't got tonight, I haven't got tomorrow, I haven't got your imaginary old age. No, says God, come, come unto me, says Jesus, and I will give you rest for your soul. Peace with God and the peace of God passes all understanding. You like a copy of God's written word, come and ask for one. Gladly, freely, place into your hand. May God bless you, Newcastle sinners. May God bless you. And of mercy, I see mercy upon your precious, precious, never dying souls.